The views and opinions expressed in this podcast by the host or the guest do not necessarily reflect the views of Paranormal Buzz Radio or its sponsors. Use of any material produced by Paranormal Buzz Radio without express written consent is strictly prohibited. For information on everything Paranormal Buzz Radio has to offer, visit our website, ParanormalBuzzRadio.com. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to Exploring the Unknown with Rebecca and Shay. Taking stories from today's news, Rebecca and Shay will explore everything from the paranormal, supernatural, the strange and unusual, unsolved mysteries, and more. Join them as they delve deep into the unknown and mysterious. Taken from news headlines, water cooler chat with a paranormal twist. Only on Paranormal Buzz Radio. On behalf of Paranormal Buzz Radio, we decided that this show warranted an extra disclaimer. During this pandemic, we do not want to bring you an ordinary extraterrestrial abductee story or multiple stories, so we decided to make this light and fun. We will be making fun of and finding out the good and bad of each of these following stories. So please save your hate mail for a different time and a different show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Exploring the Unknown. Hey, Rebecca. How you doing? Good. How are you, Shay? I'm hanging in there. I think that's my new favorite answer. Right? I think that's a good answer. Good answer, Shay. Good answer. Yeah, that's all I got. I'm hanging in there. As uh, we were talking about earlier and last week, the more time we have, the less we seem to get done. I know. I, You know, I always assumed that if I had, like, weeks off of work, I'd get a lot done. Like, the house would be clean. And no, no, that is not what is happening here. I've got a kid home, and she messes up, like, as fast as I clean, so it's not making any difference at home. Yep. Hey, we did get the bathroom done, though. Woohoo! Yeah, so... It looks good, so I'm happy about that. So, we have a very interesting story today, so we're not going to do a lot of chit-chat before, because it's a little bit longer. Yeah, I think this one will be a little bit longer. (laughs) And, uh... And this article is from Wired Magazine, and it looks like it's from April of 2012. So it's an older article, but it's interesting. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to break up each story today, guys. So Yeah. So the title of this article is Cat People, Strippers, and Telekinesis, Tales from Alien Abduct- Abductees. Alien abductions make for a good sci-fi plot device, but it's easy to forget that we walk among people in the real world who claim to have been visited, being dead, and probed by little gray men. New York photographer Stephen Hirsch has met many of these people face-to-face. He visited this year's International UFO Conference to meet, photograph, and interview people who have close contact with extraterrestrials. I don't want my audience to have any preconceptions about these people before they see my images and read their work, said Hirsch of his Little Sticky Legs project. My interviews barely break the surface of what is going on in their lives or in their months. Hirsch, who has freelanced for the New York Post for 18 years, makes a habit of shooting fringe members of society and gleaning their thoughts. Past subjects have included those leaving the Manhattan Criminal Court Building and crusty punks in the heart parks of New York city for his profile photos and interviews. The fast talking New Yorker usually shuts up and listens. I'm not an analyst. My questions are not intended to find answers, but to allow people to tell us their stories. Courthouse conventions, crusty punks and little sticky legs are all about storytelling. Their stories, not mine, says Hirsch. We've become desensitized to the TV soundbite. With these projects, we can stare at the picture Stare into their eyes, feel their angst. It's a very simple approach. There's no distractions. Reports of alien abduction are a relatively new phenomenon, with regular accounts emerging only in the 1960s. Estimates on the number of abductions vary wildly from millions, unlikely, to thousands, more likely. It's safe to say there are hundreds of reported cases in any given year. Due to a lack of any substantial physical evidence, abduction testimony is widely disputed. In the abduction experience, a critical evaluation of theory and evidence, the late Dr. Stuart Appel, professor of psychology at SUNY Brockport and specialist in perception, wrote, no theory yet enjoys enough empirical support to be accepted as a general explanation for the abduction experience. 
compelled listed psychopathologies, sleep abnormalities, and personality traits, such as proneness to fantasy and suggestibility, among potential reasons for the persistence of abduction narratives. Hypnosis treatments intended to bring details of suppressed memories of abduction back to the surface also come under criticism for actually implanting false memories in patients instead. Encounter tales are not told only by people in the margins of society. Person, ooh, that's a, that's a word right there. Ily Zimnov, we're going to go right? <clears throat> Former leader of the Russian Republic of Kalmykia, claims he was visited by a UFO on his balcony in 1997. Last month, Simon Parks, a British town counselor, told the press his mother was a nine-foot alien. Hirsch, who was also trained his lens on the homeless, on the homes of sex offenders living on Long Island, it's not looking to sugarcoat our world. I don't like people to feel comfortable. My whole life has been ish. I live in the East Village. In years gone by, there were drug dealing stores downstairs, he said. As a kid, Hirsch didn't know the names of Weegee or any street photographers, but his worldview was likely shaped by their images. I'm a hardcore New Yorker. I grew up in Brooklyn. I grew up with the tabloids, he says. You go down to the corner store at 9 p.m., and that's when the Daily News and the Daily Mirror were on stands for today's news. Murders, robberies, fires, papers full of graphic images and mayhem. Coming for a circle, it was through photo- photographing for the popular news himself that Hirsch first started thinking about alien abductees. Many years ago, I photographed a UFO convention in Connecticut while on assignment for one of the supermarket tablets, says Hirsch. The experience was mind-boggling and struck with- stuck with me for decades. This year, he was finally able to get out to Arizona and follow through on his own project. Much of American UFO lore is based on the southwestern states of Arizona and Mexico. And Hirsch has traveled many times through desert towns full of unique characters. For him, the distance between New York City and way out west is measured in more than just miles. It's measured in attitude and sight. The southwest landscape affects the people the way people think. It's trippy out there, he says. In New York, you have no sense of the universe, but in the Southwest, you can't avoid the sky. You get a sense of scale and an intimacy with the universe. So the first one of the his can we just book. can we just can we just take note yeah. of? I love how he worded it: the fringe members of society. Right, exactly. Very fringe members of society. Here. Kind of. <laughs> that's kind of. Somewhere between science and crazy. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think it's important to know that some of these people, I think, are legit crazy. Yep. And some of them are, aren't as bad. <laughs> and we're going to try to behave, but probably <laughs> not. Probably not. <laughs> probably. I mean, I think alien abductions happen. Yeah. I do. I I've think heard there's a, enough stories you that I would be like, okay, that's credible, but, but yeah, so much. I've heard some that I'm like, okay, that one sounds believable, and then there's others where I'm like, and then yeah, these are um, little snapshots uh, of people that he's taken at a convention, and then like a little short blurb about their alien abduction stories. So some of them are, are okay, and then some of them I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make it through without laughing. <laughs> So we apologize to anybody we offend during this episode. Yeah, I don't, don't mean to offend, and I don't mean to, like, belittle these people, you know, but some of these are just not believable. Yeah. And and whether, whether they're actual encounters or not, if they believe them, they still are affected by the mistruth. Like, if they believe this happened then it affects them as if it did. Well, yeah. Yeah, some of these people, I think, might actually have some serious psychosis thing going on, you know? Yeah. So, and the past life regression, um, was it 80s or 90s? It was hypnosis and stuff. There was a lot of things that came out about um, some of these people actually being strongly suggested this stuff happened to them. Right. Right. And the end result though, being that even if it didn't actually happen, exactly happened, 
they believe that happened and it affected their life. Yeah. Okay. We ready for these things? Oh, I'm ready. (laughs) Okay. So the first one is Cynthia and this is her quote. I've met salamander beans and I've met various different types of bricks. I've also met the blue Arcturians, which are incredible. They all have their own personalities and their own purposes. I've met the Andromedans, the Assyrian warriors of light. I've met the Sirius Nephrons. I've also met the cat people that are serious. I've actually seen people that can shapeshift from human looking to reptilians. Part of my mission is to help people to get to the ships that need to be on the ships. Many of the starseeds that are here on Earth on special missions are taken to the ships where they are then informed of the changes of the strategy. I've never yet met a being that was malevolent. I've always met the most benevolent ones. I never experienced unconditional love until I met them face to face and had conscious contact with them. Okay. <clears throat> so that's the first one. Uh, that's, again, this is not my expertise, um, even though there's no experts, but I mean, definitely not my. I didn't realize there were so many different names. I knew a few of those names. Uh, yeah, I knew a few of those names, but some of them were uh, new to me. Yeah, yeah, like in the cat people. The cat people. I've heard about the reptilian thing some, yes. but again, I don't really know. Um, the grays, of course, and I knew there were different types. So anyway, this, it's, it's interesting. I think it's kind of sad note, too, that she'd never met an and never experienced unconditional love. You read my Until, mind. Yeah. So. That to me is kind of sad. So she definitely needed something in her life. It sounds like her experience is positive, though. Yes, so. it does sound very positive. And I think probably explains why she enjoys continuing this experience, too. Yep. It fulfilled something that was missing in her life. Yeah, for sure. All right, yeah. next, next, next one. <laughs> oh, you guys, if you're listening, you have to look at the pictures. And he, I think he took the pictures like this on purpose of the people. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. This one of Jeffrey, I don't know if it's posed or or what. But anyway, <laughs> um, so Jeffrey, it happened 11 years ago in St. Louis, Missouri, at an exotic dancing bar. I went in there just to have a few drinks that look at some strip girls dance around the pole. And this guy comes in out of nowhere and he was black in color, but he had a very strange voice and he knew things about me that no one in the bar knew, like how many trips I took. He knew things I was doing. He knew when my parents were going to die and what they were going to die of. Then he tells me he's there to deduct me and replace 49 ships in my body. Dr. Lewinsky was one of those gray hybrids was going to, do the operation and they were going to take me aboard a flying saucer. I was swept up for like three hours and they did exactly what they said they were going to do to me and then took me back to the bar and woke me up. I lost three hours in time. So I have a couple questions. I have a lot of questions. (laughs) I have a couple questions that I'm willing to ask. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Well, this one's a little bit more down, down, not down to earth but you know what I mean um yeah I know what you mean but like how do we know he wasn't tripping well right (laughs) you know and but yeah so maybe he's talking to some guy and maybe it was a psychic and they just knew things or and he was tripping and miss or it really fucking happened I don't know but I, I I I don't know I mean there's a lot of I don't know with this one. <laughs> and then and then the whole, yeah, I was in the strip club. I mean, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and it only it only took three hours to replace 49 chips. How many chips was it? And something like that. Let me see. What does it say? Yeah, 49 chips. 49 chips. Yeah, that's a lot of chips. Well, they, uh, the, well, aliens are a lot smarter than us and have much more advanced technology, so. But right. Here's a real question. Let's say this really happened. They woke him up at the bar, 
and he had lost three hours, right? Don't you think right. a bar, I used to bartend, don't you think a bartender or one of the strippers would notice somebody passed out? Right? <laughs> that was, yeah, that was one of my questions. Or did, he, did he leave with the guy and nobody noticed? Like, Yeah, I, I wondered that too. Maybe he just left with the guy and everybody's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> and then they brought him back and then he was back to his own consciousness. But yet he remembers what they did. Right, right. It, it, yeah, this, there's a lot of questions with this one. Why does he remember so much? Because usually uh, the stories I've heard, they like wipe your memory and you don't remember it, I think. Yeah. So. Out of the two, I believe this one a little bit more, though. Yeah, I, I agree. This one is a little bit more believable to me. Because he doesn't have the answers. He's just like, this is what it is, and this is what I remember, and this is what I don't remember. and Right. And how freaky would it be to have some guy come in and tell you when your parents were going to die and how they're going to die and that sort of stuff? That would be kind of trippy. Yeah, it would. So if he wasn't tripping when it happened, I'm sure he tripped the next day. Right? Yep. Yeah, I agree. I think that this one, this one to me is a little bit more believable yes. than the last one. All right. Well, the next one kind of looks a little normal. Going yeah, by the picture. Normal. normal looking picture for this guy. Yep. Um, this name is Sebastian. It looked like a little kid, except it had big eyes. It looked just like a little kid, except it had big eyes, small nose, and a little mouth. Albert Einstein was right about something how there's different dimensions and different realities and stuff. I'm thinking they went through time. If you will know, if you will, you know. If they're out there, if they know all this, and they have all this technology and all this stuff, what are the odds of them coming back, you know? They didn't probe me. They didn't do nothing. They just opened up my eyes. It was kind of cool because before that, I just asked for something like to happen just for proof. And I just got it, you know. It was there. It happened. It was a little bit scary at the moment. It was something crazy. How did it leave? Just like it disappeared. Just like that, it disappeared. You think what you want, but that's what happened to me. So this one, he was asking for it. He wanted to be abducted by aliens. And sure enough, sure enough, he got abducted. <laughs> or he came to the realization after he was abducted. I'm trying to play the nice devil's advocate sometimes, you know, right. <laughs> it's because the way it's worded, it's hard yeah, to this understand. One, um, obviously was a little bit harder to read and understand for obvious reasons. Um, but yeah, I don't know. And it doesn't, so do you, does it actually say he was abducted or just that he met? Like, it doesn't actually say he was abducted. Well, the part where he's like, they didn't probe me. They didn't do nothing. They just opened his eyes. To me, it reads like they abducted him. Or, like, how about, like, those bedroom cases you wake up and you you hear a lot of little kids tell stories or even adults that they woke up and they saw the alien standing in the room, but then the alien just leaves. And sometimes they say later, 10 years later, then they have memories of it. Right. And well, other times. Yeah. Maybe that's it. I don't. I don't know. This one to me is kind of kind of weird. The part, like I said, he he was at, he asked for something to happen, and then he just got it. That to me makes it kind of slightly less yeah. believable because, yeah, I don't know that. But what about all these people that go asking par to be <laughs> paranormal enthusiasts? Yeah have aliens come and take you and then actually having it happen just to me seems like. Well, let's compare it to paranormal enthusiasts. Paranormal enthusiasts go in these places wanting to see ghosts, wanting to be touched. So if it happens to them, does that make it less believable? Well, yeah, you got a point there. I mean, because yeah, you know, going and wanting to have an encounter with the ghost is what we're doing. <laughs> being such a good girl today i'm being <laughs> you are you I'm are being, i'm trying to play both sides here right you are you're doing a good job Shay. <laughs> we also 
we have to remember that these weren't um, articles in the way of um, I'll ask you a question, you answer it. Then I'll ask you another question, and then you answer it. These are quotes. These are just their little blobs of what happened. Right, right. And there's more, obviously, more to their story. And they probably even told the guy more right. information than we have here. So, right. yeah. There's definitely more to this story. But, um, yeah, this, this to me, uh, I don't know. I'm he with you. Looking, yeah, he was looking for it so hard, it makes me kind of question if it really happened or not. Yep. Because it's not like, I mean, going looking for ghosts, so we're going to a location yeah, that... Yeah, but he is, was a little kid. How no, is, they look like little kids. Oh, I thought it said it took... took uh, I need to now, clean my yeah, glasses. Now, <laughs> it, they looked like little kids. Um, ah, yeah, it. I mean, unless you're going out to, like, Roswell, New Mexico, I mean... I guess I don't know enough about UFO hunting. Are there certain places where you go to try and get abducted? Or, I mean, for us, for like paranormal, you know, ghost people, you know, we go to an actively haunted location. Then, 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 yeah, we do ask to be touched and stuff. But like, do we go to like UFO alley and ask to be abducted? I've never heard of an actual paranormal investigator that um, specializes in UFO um, and alien abductions or anything that actually go looking to be abducted. It's usually they're trying to find evidence of it. They're trying to find out the stories, uh, stuff like that. I've never heard of one. And again, I haven't heard of that many compared to what I know about ghost people, but it's more of. Right. Yeah. Same, same deal. I haven't, I just, I guess I'm just not really that familiar with the subject. Um, me neither. So I'm like making this up as I go. I meant the <laughs> comments about their stories, not the other stuff, but. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I find it interesting, though. I just reading reading these stories, I find fascinating. It just, I maybe because I just don't know enough about it. And then there's the actual psychology part of it. If you remember bits and pieces of stuff, your brain's going to fill in the rest. Right. So yeah, there could true. be um, some truth to these with false memories intertwined. And again, I'm trying to be devil's advocate. I'm not saying I believe all these stories hook, line, and sinker, but um, I I'm trying to do my good deed for the month and be a good <laughs> doobie. Right, right. I, I I don't know. I mean, yeah, that one that one to me was kind of interesting. They're all Again, interesting. Question. A lot of questions with these. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't help that they're not articles. It's just like a little yeah. blurb. Right. Uh, whatever the word is. Yeah, just these little blurbs make it kind of more like, hmm. <laughs> yep. Okay. So the next one is Sasha. He My looks like a Sasha. He looks like he yeah. toyed with Grateful Dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely a Sasha. Yeah. <laughs> My consciousness was in the middle of this huge dome-like structure. The inside of the structure was white, and then there were coves in it that were big enough for people to sit in meditation, and they were sitting cross-legged. Some of them wore white robes. Some of them had long hair. They were all humanoid. There were some I couldn't quite tell what they were, but I got the feeling they were a type of human. The atmosphere in this place was absolutely beautiful. It was golden light and the background was white, like it was whitewashed and it was a place of meditating on peace and love. Well, first off, I want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> right. This sounds okay. It sounds like a spa or like a... I, I know, right? And But again, the other thing, I really think maybe this was just like a, an acid trip. <laughs> or a smoking they were him and his friends were in their toga outfits in college and were passing along that happy peace pipe and uh all of a sudden they turned into <laughs> yeah yeah that's kind of the impression this one gives to me like yeah this looks like a really good time <laughs> <And> <laughs> for the record 
I did not read this story before I made the Grateful Dead comment. It's just coincidence. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, but, it, it, yeah, it, it picture really does kind of go along with that story. <laughs> yeah, it really does. Uh, hey, if I hope this one's real because it was nice and calm and peaceful. Um, I, I think if we had to choose alien abduction stories that we wanted to take place to us, yeah. this would be the one I would choose. Yeah. This sounds all right. <laughs> yeah, this one, you know, it sounds like they're all in a, a, spar, a, spar, a spa setting. That was my mass accent coming out. Um, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. this is so mellow compared to like uh, Travis Walters, is Walton, Walters. What's his last name? Yeah, I don't know. Mm. Travis Walter, Walters. We'll get back to you guys on that one. Yeah, I don't they, know. I'm, I'm not... sure they know who if they follow alien stuff. Um, what's it? They're... Yeah, I was say, it, it, for alien abduction stories, you know, that's the good one right there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all in on that one. Right? If you could add in a massage in there, too, you know, that would be perfect. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but why are aliens wearing robes? I don't know. I don't hear that I can recall, and listeners can correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm often wrong. I've never heard a story of them wearing clothing. No, I have not either. Unless it was just so traumatic for him, seeing what their anatomy looked like, that he pictures them with robes on. Maybe. Maybe that's it. I don't, I don't know. I just, I'm going to have to look into this stuff some more, though, to see how many see him with clothes, yeah. don't see him with clothes. Again, not, I, another interesting story. We have more questions. <laughs> Yes, definitely more questions. Oh, no picture for the next one. I got a picture. Um, I got a picture of the lady with her hand up against her face. Nope, I don't have it. Huh. She looks very confused in this picture. (coughs) Anyway, so this one is Vivian. They said they had been coming to me ever since I was a child, and they were not doing anything against my will. And I used to be one of them. And I had agreed to be this bridge between the Pleiades. They had been teaching me things that I was supposed to bring through and teach to others here on Earth. And I hadn't been doing a very good job of it. So they were giving me a review of what they taught me. They were telling me things about cleaning up the environment, being nicer to each other, and having more brotherly love. And also the big thing that was important to them was getting rid of nuclear power plants. They said it was contaminating the earth, and it also had the potential for harming them, too. All right. Again, another positive. Um, I want to meet these ones and send them to certain people's houses that need to learn these lessons. (laughs) Right? I'm starting a list now, man. (laughs) Yes. Let's sign people up for this alien abduction. (laughs) Sounds like, you know, what I've been preaching. Maybe they have visited me. Well, maybe, you know, this this sounds like the retraining alien abduction. Okay, you didn't learn the lesson. Now you will learn it. And (laughs) And pass it on. Yes, pass it on. This is what you're all supposed to be doing. Now go there. Yeah, yeah, this would not be a, uh, I don't think this would be a bad alien abduction either. No, no. But then again, yeah, you've got stuff you're supposed to be doing. Now get out there too. Exactly. And it's all positive stuff. Right. Having more brotherly love. That's a good thing. Everybody needs that. Yep. And be nicer to each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like it. And excuse my coughing, guys. There's no way I'll be able to edit th- this out. I just I can't help it in advance, so I'm sorry. Yeah, it's allergy season. Yeah. <laughs> Mine's still the same thing I've had, so who knows. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, so this next one is Lisa. All right, before you read it, though, does she purposely make them all look high? (laughs) Look at their eyes. They're all almost like a pink or blood, like a fake bloodshot type. Uh, 
Maybe. I don't know. They, I would agree that they all kind of look high. Um, but this woman looks normal as can be. I don't mean nothing bad. It's just I think he's purposely taken the pictures this way. Well, yeah, the eyes on a lot of them are really, really red. And that first one looked like yeah. an alien eye. That first woman. Yes, I agree. She had some weird eyes. I don't know if she like purposely. Yeah, this they can't all be. <laughs> I don't know. This looks like somebody's sister, somebody's mother, but they all almost have the same eyes. They do. Like, like literally, I'm going back. And they're all blue eyes. Well, I can't. Yeah. I can't tell on Jeffrey. His he he. He's looks, he's weird looking. He looks <laughs> a little demonic. Yeah. Yeah, that first one. Her eyes are like red. They match her lipstick, and she's got these like mint green eyes. And everybody else looks like they have blue eyes. Yeah. So agreed. it's got to be his style. Sorry. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. So Lisa. <clears throat> yes. This bean handed me a small baby. I looked up to him and he handed me a second one that shouldn't have been there. I woke up screaming and was so angry. Came back with bruising that shouldn't have been there. I had a hole in the back of my head that underneath black light glowed with a triangle around it. I like to tell myself that they were dreams, but somehow inside myself, I know it was more than that. Well, up to the hole in the head, it sounded like my delivery of the twins. Right? I didn't have a hole in my head. I did have bruising. They did hand me a second baby, you know. <laughs> right? To me, the, the, it sounds like a nightmare. You know, I have total weird nightmares like that. Mm, and I then, yeah, and then, then the whole hole in the back of your head with the black light thing. Who, who thinks to look at it with a black light, though? I don't know. I mean, that to me is like, okay. <laughs> Maybe she went to one of those, um, those, uh, what are those club, not clubs, like, you know, where they do all kinds of drugs and they'd have the neon writing all over themselves and black lights. Uh oh, oh, yeah, maybe. There we maybe. go. I'm trying to give her, I'm trying to come up with plausible explanations of how. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, again, this one is kind of. I have more questions. <laughs> yeah. Or she just said, oh, my God, this happened to me. Hun, take this black light. What's this lump I feel? What's this hole in my head? Look at it with the black light. Yeah, check it out with the black light. Yeah, because that's what the other members in the club say to do. Right, right. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's what it was. Can you imagine the hate mail we're going to get after this? <laughs> Yeah, anyway. <laughs> but again, I'm, you know, people that don't understand make fun of me for paranormal investigating on the ghost side of things. And some of the encounters I've had, people make fun of me. And so. Right. You know, I'm, you have to be able to laugh about it. You know, when we're doing ghost investigations, yeah, I mean, we're laughing and we're having a good time. And I think. Like I said, it's not that I'm belittling these people's experience. That's not what. That's not what I'm trying to do here. No, I just questioning. You know, yeah. like we do in a fun not, way, uh, and we're just we're not being mean. We're just doing it in a fun way. Right. Yeah, just just like what we do in a paranormal investigation, where we go back over the evidence and like try and prove and disprove. Exactly. <laughs> you know that's. One of the cornerstones of paranormal investigating is trying to prove or disprove if that actually happened or not. So, uh, Jeannie here also has blue eyes and her eyes are bloodshot as hell. Uh, yeah. A lot yeah. of these people, I again, I don't know if it's the editing process that the he, photographer he had did, to have, unless they were all smoking weed when he walked up to it. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's okay, possible, so, too, but it just, they looked, most of them look staged. Yeah. So this one's Jeannie. I awakened in the middle of the night with feeling this weird heat down around my sexual area. Dot, dot, dot. 
Right? That's what the article says, people. Dot, dot, dot. Uh, there are no quotes around that, either mm-hmm. sexual areas, just how she supports it. I can feel these long, skinny, bony fingers drawing circles on my right ovary. And I felt the paralysis and thought, oh, shoot, they are really here. Oh, my God. I'm not sure how I saw them. If it was, you know, t- tuning in and seeing them on what level. So when I'm really realizing they're with me, the energy feels different. It was totally unnerving to me to recognize that they were really visiting with me. And I could see there was a smaller gray on my right hand side and a slightly taller one on my left. And I remember telepathing to the gray. Please stop doing that. I don't want you to touch me. I asked him three times. It didn't stop. So I'm not sure if it was my astral arm that came out. And I reached over and I grasped his long, skinny, bony fingers with my left hand and said, I asked you not to touch me. Please do not touch me. And then I noticed the grays on each side of my bed looked at each other. And I thought, ah, shoot, they're going to knock me out with that white light. Again. To me, this sounds like it is an actual instance of sleep paralysis, medical sleep paralysis. Yeah, I I agree. This one does sound more like sleep paralysis. Um, She uses the word paralysis right in her story. She says her astral arm, because she couldn't move, she couldn't talk, so she uh, had to talk to them telepathically. So, Right. Yeah, it, it does sound like sleep paralysis. Although, yeah, it sounds like she's had this experience multiple times. Yeah. Either way, scary as hell. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of freaky. This one would be not not the alien abduction experience that I'd want. Yeah, I I wouldn't pick this package. (laughs) No. No, definitely. Go back to the spa package. (laughs) Yeah, that one was a good one. I went the spa alien abduction, not this creepy. uh... (laughs) (coughs) Um, Either way, like I said, whether... It, this is a real encounter, or it's sleep pro- scary as hell. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, creepy. Yeah. It that one's creepy. Very creepy. Okay, we'll go on to Stephen. Okay, this guy looks halfway normal. Yeah, maybe. I, yeah, he does, except the eyes again. Which, like I said, I think that's just how this person set it up on purpose. Right. This one, I think, if I ran across him, I I wouldn't think he was too weird. <laughs> you know, some of these people, I th- I think if I saw them on the street, I'd be like, and that's the one's a weirdo. This one, I don't think I would say that. Mm-hmm. I think he looks kind of half normal. Yep. We're about to yeah. find out. It was an auditorium and with stadium seating. There was a podium down at the bottom, and he led me to a seat. All around me, there were some humans there here and there, but there was a lot of different types of alien beings. Next thing, I'm leaving, bringing me down the aisle again. I'm telling them, I want to stay. I don't want to go. I started crying. I say, I like it here. I belong. And they said, no, it's not your time, and you have to help save this planet Earth. That's all I remember. Interesting. Yeah, that one's interesting, too. That one sounds more almost like a near-death type experience. Hey, that's what I was thinking. Exactly. Yeah. But nothing too crazy. No, no, that's not too crazy. And that one, again, that one could almost just be a dream, you know. Mm -hmm. But but obviously he felt it was strong enough. He went to this alien convention, so. Yeah, I want to know what what the speakers were talking about. Yeah. What kind of, what kind of talks did they put on? Yeah, it looks like an interesting event. For sure. Yep. I wish some of these stories were more detailed. Yeah. Yeah, this story, it, I, although it's interesting and I like I like all the different people and stuff, I, I, I wanted to read the article that goes along with it that tells about the event. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay, so this next one's name is Jocelyn. Hello, Jocelyn. She I, looks normal. Yeah, except again the eyes, but I... Yeah, and I think I don't. Her eyes don't look quite as bad as yeah. some of the other. Oh, but um, okay. So Jocelyn, we were taken to an underground base 
near the Sedona area. There was this little teardrop kind of looked sort of like a pendulum upside down. What they wanted me to do was move it with telekinesis through this hoop, literally jump through this hoop. And I couldn't do it, so the mantis helped me do it. Then they did this blue flashing thing, and then they said, now you try it, and I was able to move it through the hoop. I was told at that time they were upgrading my pineal gland for intuition, so I have more psychic ability. Interesting. Interesting. And I've, I've heard that Sedona is popular for that sort of thing yes <laughs> i'm just trying to, i'm just trying to think in my own head like is this something like psychic abilities is it something you're already born with or is could this be how some people get it i mean yeah i don't know i always thought it was just you were born with it and that was that yeah. you know you're just learning how to use it yeah you know like a muscle so, and it kind of almost makes it sound like they were training hard to sit there. Exactly. Training lessons. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. I wonder if she do telekinesis now. Right? <laughs> or if it was just when she was with the aliens. I know. I was wondering that too. It's interesting. Yep. If I was writing this article, I would be asking them these questions, but... I know, I know. Some, but some of these, are like, I really want to know more. I would really like to ask this person some more questions. Yep. And again, <laughs> the author, you know, this is how author. I got spoken to about my mass accent the way I said it last week. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I would definitely be asking. But I think he set it up this way just to give the little blurbs. Yeah, it's interesting. It is an interesting article and an interesting read. This next guy looks kind of like a cowboy. Yeah, he looks normal. <laughs> he does look normal. This is another normal-looking guy. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would not suspect him of being abducted by aliens. So this one is Steve. Uh, it rocked back and forth, and Travis stands up. A bluish-green light comes out and zaps him. He flies backward about 20 feet where it zapped him. I said, it got him. When I said it got him, Mike takes off and leaves him. We were going down the highway. We stopped down the road. The light that came out and zapped him was bluish green. I didn't see nobody. We stopped down the road a little bit to talk about what happened, and we went back to look for him and couldn't find him. So we went into town. Kenny Peterson called the cops, and the cops came out there, and we told them the story. He didn't believe us. He thought we were drunk or something. This is uh, Travis Walton. Yeah, I was going to say, this one I think is a, a story I've heard. I think yes, I've heard it is. It's tra it's, uh, uh, I misspoke earlier. Um, it's a f uh, fire in the sky is the movie. Ah. Um, I yeah. See now, if you just to hear that, you don't get the full picture of, of the story. And I've done enough reading and research on this whole story. Like I said earlier, that I actually believe this happened. I believe the people right. that were involved with this one. Right. And I've heard, I've heard about this one before too. I think, I think this one is real. I yeah. mean, this the this story I've heard before. So even even just that little clip of it, I was kind of like, I know this one. Yeah. I mean, I could be wrong, but even the last name they threw out there. Okay, next one is Heather. And again, these last ones look a lot more normal. Yeah. <laughs> these, these last people, those first ones were just kind of like, oh boy, yeah. these people are looking like regular normal people. Yep. Yeah. So this one's Heather. Um, I did not know what had happened. All I knew was something had happened. And about a month later, out of nowhere, I experienced what I later called a data dump or download of information into my mind, which I also couldn't explain. I believe I've, I have implants of my nose. I guess I've had nose relief since a particular date and time. Every time I get one of those, I feel as if I've been upgraded and I become a little more clairvoyant and aware of what's going on around me. So another one that contributes her encounters with psychic abilities. Yeah. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Yep. It is. Like they're coming, like the aliens are coming along and unlocking stuff. Ah. Because I've always wondered if, like, um, psychics, maybe a part of their brain works, like we all have it in our brain or 
but that part of their brain actually works because you don't use your whole brain. Right, right, exactly, exactly. I've always, I've always heard that you're as psychic as you'll ever be. You just have to learn how to use it. Yeah. But everybody's got gifts and abilities. It's just learning how to flex that muscle. Yes. So. Oh, that's him. Oh, this next guy. Oh, yeah, Travis. That I bet you that's. Oh, let's read the. That's about the right time. All right, read the story. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Travis, November 5th, 1975. Me and six other men were leaving work in a remote forest, and we encountered an unidentified flying object, and I was taken aboard. My coworkers were accused of murdering me and making up a story to cover up for why I was missing. The state police gave them a lie detector test, but even though they've passed, ever since then, it's been one sort of attempt to explain it away explain it away any way that they could. If you're going to pass judgment on it, get the facts first. When I regained consciousness on board, I encountered some definitely non-human entities and also some beings that resembled humans to a high degree. It was a very traumatic experience. So yeah, this guy, he must have been given a, a talk there at this convention. Yeah, he could have been. Because I've heard this story. Yes. This, this story, yeah. I Wasn't there a movie? Yeah, I just said that. <laughs> Fire in the Sky. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, on the last, was it Steve that was talking about it? Yeah. Right. So that's interesting that they have them both there. Yeah, it is. It is interesting. Yep. I think his last name's Walton. Um, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I think that's what it is. Right. And th this story is familiar, but I'm not familiar with it enough to be able to say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And right. I, I recognize his picture, so. Ah, well, that's why I said, go. oh, it's him. <laughs> so this next guy, again, fairly normal looking. Let's see what his story is about. This is Terrence. I would see them come through a wall or through a door, and I would just mentally, mentally say, do what you have to do as long as you don't hurt me, and I'd pass out. Then about four years ago, I just got tired of it. I said, look, you guys shouldn't be doing that because I felt like they're down in areas they shouldn't be in, you know, down around the genitals and stuff. They said, we have the right. I don't know what they meant by that. But and then I said to the one that was working on me, which was a taller one with a big head and big face, which he always put it right up against my face. All I could see was his big back thighs. And I said, but what are you doing all this all the time? But why are you doing all this all the time? And he said, you will know when it's time. And that was the only message I got. From then on, they stopped coming. I'm disappointed. I left them coming. I was hoping to learn something, but they never talked to me or anything except to give me a message if I asked something. And the message was basically shut up. Uh, this one's a little confusing to me. Again, probably not his full story. Um, right. Yeah. But... He says, look, you guys shouldn't be doing this, you know, telling them to stop. And then he's disappointed when they never come back. Yeah. Again, I, that part to me, I find confusing because he's like getting regular visitations, doesn't act like he likes it. And then it stops and he's like, but I wanted them. I was disappointed. I'm like, what? What do you mean you were disappointed? They stopped. You asked them to stop. And like, they stopped. Yeah. Yeah. But. Then again, as as uh, we investigate haunted houses and stuff, we always say, you know, uh, if you get scratch or something, you can't physically hurt me. Don't do that. And right. then when nothing happens, some people get disappointed. So maybe that's. Well, yeah, that could be. That could be. They maybe he just liked the the vacation trip. Maybe. <laughs> maybe the trip. You know. Yeah, could be. He um, or maybe he just didn't realize until after that he would miss it yeah maybe hmm, maybe he was getting more out of the experience than he realized you know yes. more that more was happening than he didn't remember you know because that's just, a big thing with all these people they don't remember everything Almost right like it's set up that way on purpose mm -hmm. they remember just enough right so this next one is jill um, Jill says the message from the Zetas are basically that they're helping us in our evolutionary process. 
all of these events that are happening that people are experiencing, such as abductions, are to help us evolve. Help us evolve as a species into more luminous beings, lighter beings. Our actual DNA is being shifted, so our physical bodies are actually becoming lighter in frequency, and they're helping us to do this and to activate abilities that we have inherently, but that we've that but that have been basically shut off, not activated. So we have this extra DNA that we're not using. Uh, how do you have extra DNA that you're not using? Yeah, I don't know about extra DNA. I mean, maybe more like we talked before, like parts of the brain that we're not yeah. using, that they're activating. And she's again talking about um, gifts and stuff that uh, abilities that we haven't been using um, that they're activating for us. Yeah, I don't know. I have to look into that. I just. At least the other one, the other one said pituitary gland. Right. That, that would make a little bit, a little bit more sense. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> but then again, I'm, I'm not a scientist and I don't know that much about DNA, but I don't understand how you can have extra DNA. Unless, yeah, unless she just worded it. Maybe, maybe she's wording it like differently than I would. Yeah, um, that could be. Yeah, and it could be more, you know, like she's talking about them altering our DNA. Yeah. I mean, I've, heard, I've heard that, oh, which blood type is it? Like the RH positive or whatever is supposed to be aliens. Both both my sisters, I think, have that. RH, what is it? Negative. You can talk. Negative. RH negative. Yeah. Yeah, so. I've, I've heard something about the RH stuff. If, if you have that, then then you're possibly an alien descent or something. So, all right, my mother's going to be included here for a second because this is too funny. So, okay. is a mama. theory <laughs> that the ones that have that blood type could possibly be aliens. So that explains everything right there. <laughs> okay. She said, "Uh, okay." <laughs> <laughs> She's being quiet because I said I was including it in the show. She doesn't want to talk. <laughs> now she doesn't want to talk. <laughs> yeah. Um, huh. I'll have to look into that too. Yeah. I, I know I've seen a couple articles on that, which so that would kind of link in with what she's trying to say here. Yeah, that could be. Our DNA being shifted. Yeah. All right, so what do you think, Shay? Do you want, you want to try and get abducted or not? I'm not. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like, I, I signed me up for the spa one. Yeah. That, if we have uh, to pick a package, that would be it. <laughs> if we have to pick a package, I want the spa one that turns on my abilities, not the probing one. <laughs> yes, I do not want to be probed. I choose no. <laughs> I choose no. <laughs> I am I am going a little stir crazy in the house at this point, but not enough to be like uh, instead of Cal up. instead of Calgon take me away. <laughs> We're not driving out to Sedona trying to be kidnapped by aliens. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Although I think they could probably sell that uh, spa meditation package, you know, if they if they were trying to get people to be yeah. abducted, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wonder if you get to choose somehow, like subconsciously, and you just don't know it. Right, right. Although I think if they were to say, okay, <laughs> they have, we're going to abduct you and take you to the meditation spa, they'd have a line of people right. coming. Right. <laughs> Like, who's going to say, do you want the meditation spa or do you want to be probed? <laughs> right. Do you want, would you like to sign up for the uh, alien meditation package or the alien probing package where we insert uh, stuff everywhere? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we insert everything we can in every office and under the skin and. 
Yeah, and you're going to have nosebleeds for the rest of your life. Yeah. Um, which, one, which one would you sign up for? Yeah, I think that's kind of a no-brainer package to take out there. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, this was an interesting story. It was. I like this one. Yep. I wish it was more um, yeah. detailed because that's why it's easy to make fun of or why we're like trying to come up with different um, possibilities because we don't have the full story and you right. have to go by what you have in front that of you. Little snippet leaves a lot of questions. Yes. You know, just makes me like, what? I, I want to ask this person to clarify this. Yeah, exactly. All right, guys, our time is up for today. We hope you enjoyed this story or stories. Yeah, I think this one was really interesting. Um, I hope to see you guys in the Facebook group so we can continue the discussion. Um, yeah. Check out the link to the article and see all the pictures that we talked about. Yeah, and let us know what you think of them. Yeah, it'd be interesting to hear if you actually know some of these people, maybe. Yes. Yes, yes. And don't forget, share your stories with us, guys, so we can give you a special shout out on the show. Yeah, love to have some ideas for the show. Yep. Thank you, guys. Thanks.